triangle proportionality theorem. Sounds super fancy. It's a pretty common sense theorem that you're going to like. It's one of those like shortcut theorems where you don't have to necessarily use it all the time, but if you remember to use it, it saves you time. It helps you be more efficient so you don't run out of time during quizzes and stuff. So, triangle proportionality theorem. TPT. Okay, unconventionally, to start our lesson, we're going to do a problem that you don't use the triangle proportionality theorem on. I want to show you what when you don't use it so I can contrast that and show you when you use it. So please put this example in your notes. We're going to solve this without using the theorem, simply just with using similar triangles. Do be aware that in this unit, as we're solving all of these, it is easy to take for granted that the triangles are similar. We never want to start setting up proportions until we've confirmed that they're similar. What are these two triangles guilty of being similar by? Side, angle, side. No. Franklin, not quite. That's not one of the theorems. A, A. Yeah, angle, angle, similarity. We've got our shared angle here, and we've got corresponding angles in either of those two positions. You stop right there. You don't even need to look at the third angle. You're not supposed to. It's ang they're guilty of being similar by angle, angle. Okay, so now that we know they're similar, we can set up a proportion. Let's find x first, okay? So I'm going to set up a ratio. 12 is to x as I want you to write the right side, and don't type it or say it yet. This is where we need to be so careful, and this is the most common mistake that people make. Oh, you didn't need to reduce it because we're just, you know, cross-multiplying. So... 12 is to x as 15 is to, and here's where the biggest mistake is made. Does 6 correspond with x? Are those corresponding sides? No. Nope. No. Since x is the side of the larger triangle, our denominator better contain the side of the larger triangle, not just a partial side of the larger triangle. So it's very important that the left ratio matches, mirrors the right ratio, or you're going to cross-multiply and get the complete wrong answer. All right, let's do it. Cross-multiply. 12 times 21 divided by 15. Yell it out. Sixteen point eight. Okay. It's not a scale factor or anything, so Ms. Tanton's going to totally let you keep it as a decimal. Now let's find why. All right, so we've got 10 is to y as, what do we write on the right? You can say it. Nobody? Um, yeah, you use that same exact proportion again. Very good. 10 and 15 are corresponding. Those are good. And then y is the entire side of the big triangle. So I need the entire side again. Good. You reuse it. You use it twice. So cross, multiply, and divide. 210 divided by 15. What is y? 14. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move on. We just use similar triangles and we set up a proportion. We're going to move on. That's not using the theorem. Now I want you to look at these triangles, look at the side links, make connections, compare and contrast the triangles. Some of these we can use the theorem on and some of these we can't use the theorem on. So come to some conclusions. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, if I said that this segment splits some of the triangle sides proportionally, which ones does that segment split the sides proportionally. Which triangles? Two and three. Two and three, yeah. Because if you look at it right away, six is to five as five is to seven. Uh, no, that's not a true proportion. That Those ratios are not equal. Let's look at this. Two is to four as five is to ten. 
Ding, ding, ding. Two doubled is four. Five doubled is ten. Look at this one. Three is to nine as five is to fifteen. Ding, ding, ding. Scale factor is three. Okay, look here. Two is to six, okay, times three, as four is to, oh, no, no, no. So, in two of these situations, that side got cut proportionally. Got cut proportionally. What triangles are we looking at? I see the small one and the big one. And what is we're just, yeah, right now we're just looking at the pieces created by these um, segments cutting through them. So, um, Lost my train of thought. So, what do you think is true in triangles two and three that's not true in triangles one and four? They're proportional. Okay. What do you think is true about the segment that's splitting the side? That's proportional. I drew them for a reason to look really different. In two and three, I drew it a certain way, and in one and four, I drew it really obvious that this wasn't happening. It's parallel. 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 That's what I was going for. So in these examples, that segment is parallel to the third side, and in one and four, oh, it's cutting it at a really weird angle. That's why it's not cutting the sides proportionally. Because it's trying to come through here at an angle that's not parallel to the third side. So write the theorem down. If a line parallel to the side of a triangle intersects the two other sides, then it divides the sides proportionally. So the hypothesis is if it's parallel, the conclusion is then the pieces are proportional. If parallel, then pieces proportional. What the focus of this theorem is, remember I kind of told you it was a shortcut theorem? Yes, these triangles are already similar. Yes, we could solve them like we solved the one at the beginning of class. But what's cool is actually they're telling us I can say A is to B as C is to D. That is not what we did in that first problem. We said A is to A plus B as C is to C plus D. Do you see the difference? It's saying, sometimes they call it the side splitter theorem. It's saying it splits the side proportionally. So it says you can say piece divided by piece equals piece divided by piece instead of the whole side over the whole side equals the whole side over the whole side. It's like a shortcut. That's all it is. Where you can use the pieces of the triangle, like this little piece, instead of adding up and using the whole triangle. Okay, I'm going to move on. You can watch the recorded lesson and press pause if you didn't have time to write all of that. I know it was a lot to write. Okay, so I want to show you an example where it's asking us to find the length of EC. I want to show you the way we would have solved it had we not known the TPT, had we not known the triangle proportionality theorem, okay? So we would have solved it like this. 32 is to 56 as... 40 is to 40 plus x. That is not a very, not as easy of a proportion to solve. You can't just cross multiply and divide. We had to do these extra steps where we added things together. There's room for error. It's more complicated. Now with the TPT, now with the new theorem, it is beautiful. You do 30, oops, my eraser. You do 32 is to 24 as 40 is to x. You cross multiply and you call it a day. So you see what this theorem allows us to do? It says, hey, DE for sure splits AB and AC proportionally because it's parallel. Does it make sense when we can use this theorem? Yes, acknowledge Ms. Tanton. What's the answer? Okay, x is 30, yes, I don't know where everyone is. Yes, Fong, only when it's parallel, since being parallel was the hypothesis. The hypothesis is if a line parallel to a side, well, if you want to use a theorem, you better satisfy the hypothesis, okay? 
Now, what's cool about this theorem, I mean, honestly, it's true about most theorems, but anyways, what's cool about this theorem is that the converse works as well. Do not write this down, but what the converse says is that if the sides, the pieces, not the sides, if the pieces are proportional, then those segments are parallel. So if proportional, then parallel. It's the converse of the TPT. So we can use that in a problem like this. Verify, that means mathematically show that it's true, that MN is parallel to KL. So what we would do is we would show, okay, enough with the annotations. We would show 42 is to 21 as 30 is to 15. There's a lot of ways to show that's true. You can reduce both sides. Oh, 2 equals 2. Yay. Or you can cross multiply. Verify just means mathematically show that it's true. Now that I know that the pieces are proportional, now I can add arrows showing that they are parallel. All right, so it's always good to try out what we learned on the coordinate plane as well. Does the triangle proportionality theorem apply to this triangle? How can we determine if we're allowed to use the theorem here? Oh, I love that. Love it. You have to find the slope. Slope can tell us if two segments are parallel. Then if they're parallel, we're allowed to use the theorem. We're not actually going to use the theorem, but we'll know that it applies to this picture. Awesome. So let's find the slope of P, Q, and M, N. Rise. One, two, three. Run. One, two, three, four, five, six. M, N, rise, one, two, run, one, two, three, four. What do you think? Yay. Yay. Since they have the same slope, we know that they are parallel, meaning we're allowed to use the theorem. All right, so that's the end of the lesson, but I'm going to just do some more examples until my class period's over. You can go watch them if you have to leave, okay? I'm just going to do some more examples. Try your homework tonight. All right, so let's erase annotation. All right, find the length of segment RN. This is the most basic application of the theorem that you're going to get. As long as you set up the left matching the right on your proportion, you're going to get this one right. 8 is to 5 as 10 is to x. You can write your answer as a decimal, 6.25, or you can write it as a fraction, 12. Find the length of CY. Once again, super, super basic application. 9 is to 4 as 10 is to X. Cross multiply. The only, only way you can write your answer on this one is 40 ninths. Franklin, you won't need this theorem on the quiz tomorrow. The quiz is only over similar triangles. So AA similarity, side angle side similarity, and side 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 similarity. So when you put 49ths in your calculator, you get 4.4 repeating. You're not allowed to write that as an answer on a quiz or a test or an assessment. So make sure you put 49ths. All right, this one, there's only one extra step to do. We know that YZ splits the sides proportionally. Okay, so we cannot say 30 is to 18 as x is to 30. You don't just throw the numbers you're given into the proportion all the time. So I'm going to call it a because x is already in the picture. We do need to subtract here. It is important that we're using the pieces created by yz instead of using whole side of x u. All right, now we can say 12 is to 18 as a is to 30. Cross multiply and divide, I think we get 20. Awesome. So A is 20. The length of BH, 
Another very basic one, we're always, we should always be checking for those parallel lines, which I haven't done every problem. Always be checking for those parallel lines. X is to 9 as 9 is to 15. Okay. 5.4 or 27 fifths, either one of those will work. Here's another one where we would need to subtract. So we'll start with 49 minus 14 so that we can use our theorem. 35 is to 14 as x is to 8. Easy, easy, easy. Twenty again. All right. In ABC, DE is parallel to BC. AC is thirty. DE is twelve, and BC is twenty. Find AE. Will we be using the TPT in problem five? Will we be using the TPT? evidence here. The triangle proportionality theorem says that if DE is parallel to BC, then circle is to star as circle is to star. But is are those the parts we were given? It doesn't say anything about DE and BC. It says stuff about AD and DB. You get what I'm saying? It splits the sides in half. So we have to be careful when we're given 12 and 20 we are not using the triangle proportionality theorem. So instead, we have to go back to solving this like the olden days, like the old times. So we could say 12 is to 20. So that's the whole bottom of the small one and the whole bottom of the large one. The small over, we'll do large, equals, we need the whole side of the small one and we need the whole, they gave it to us, thank goodness, but we needed the whole side of the large one. That is not using the triangle proportionality theorem. I'm not saying this problem is any harder than the other ones, but be careful because we're using holes and no longer those pieces like E, C, and D, B. So we just need to be aware and careful. All right, so that one, X is 18. Last problem. On the map, 1st Street and 2nd Street are parallel. Love some good old real world applications. What is the distance from City Hall to 2nd Street along Cedar Road? So if you're still logged in, I want you to try this one and private chat me. <laughs> All right, so this one we can use the triangle proportionality theorem. 2.1 is to 2.8 as x is to 2.4. The only caveat here is that when you find x, that is not the answer to the problem. So let's go ahead and find x. And you get 1.8. But you read the directions, you make sure you found what it asked for. What's the distance from City Hall to Second Street along Cedar Road? City Hall to 2nd Street along Cedar Road. So it wasn't asking for 1.8 as the answer. We have to add this to this, getting 4.2 miles as the final answer.